Since Armour of Forger released on PS5 and the game launched into the stratosphere, two things have happened for me. One, my Reforger mods video has gained traction, and two, I have been asked a bunch of times in my comments and Discord server how exactly mods work in Armour of Forger. So although this is outside the scope of the kinds of videos I usually make, I am more than happy to help out our new community members. And in this video I will firstly answer that particular question and then give some other tips that I think will be helpful for new players. So without further ado, let's get into it. If you're on PS5, unfortunately you will have to wait to try out the hundreds of community made mods for Armour of Forger, as Bohemia Interactive are still working alongside Sony to make mods available to PS5 players. However, if you're on Xbox or PC, you may want to join one of the many modded servers you've seen here on YouTube. So the first thing you need to do, and this is very important, in order to join a modded server, you need to do absolutely nothing. Unlike Armour 3, Reforger automatically downloads and enables the mod list of the server you are joining and likewise, if you were to join a vanilla server afterwards, it would completely disable all of your mods. But there are some things you are going to want to know, so stick around. Firstly, if you try to join a modded server and you get a notification saying that a certain mod cannot be downloaded and the problem is not resolved when you hit the try again button, the fastest way to fix the problem is go directly to the workshop and manually download the mod. If this is a mod you already have and the server is trying to download the most current version of said mod, then likewise go into the workshop and delete and reinstall the mod manually. This has worked for me and the guys in my community every time so far. So now a quick rundown on the workshop itself and how you can try out different mods and maps in single player. When you enter the workshop, in the top left you have three main tabs. Mods, Downloaded, and Mod Manager. The Mods tab contains the full library of community made mods and you can find exactly what you are looking for by using the search bar at the top right of your screen or browse a filtered selection of mods by enabling the filters section and applying filters to your search as you see fit. Hovering over any mod will show a download symbol which you can click on to download the mod or you can click into the mod itself for more options. However, to keep this simple we will come back to that. The downloaded tab is pretty self-explanatory and contains all the mods you have already downloaded. And now the mod manager tab. The list on the left contains all the mods in your library that you have already downloaded. The list on the right contains all the mods that you currently have enabled. And you can enable or disable mods using these little arrow buttons. Saving a mod list preset is done by going to the puzzle piece at the top right of your screen, which is also called mod manager, click create new preset or hit enter then type your preset name and hit enter again. The JSON and command line tabs you see to the right of the presets tab are for server hosting stuff that you don't need to worry about at this stage. Now to show you how to load up mods and try them out in single player, we are going to load up three mods. First, RHS status quo, which gives you the US, Russian and Ion PMC factions, along with all their modern weapons and equipment. Secondly, we will load up this awesome AH6M little bird mod. And the last mod we're going to enable is Arichne, which is one of my favorite maps at the moment. So we are firstly going to click into the AH6M Little Bird mod, as this one has dependencies and it will be helpful for you to know about them. Clicking into the mod gives you three more tabs at the top left of your screen. An overview of the mod, which is the landing page. A dependencies tab, which informs you of any other mods that the current mod requires to work correctly. But don't worry, when you enable a mod that has dependencies, the game will either automatically enable dependencies or notify you that they need to be downloaded or updated. And lastly, the local dependent mods tab, which shows you other mods that you have already downloaded that require the mod you are currently looking at in order to work correctly. Now we will back out of the little bird mod and open up the Zarechne map mod and you will see all the stuff you are now familiar with. But on a modded map, you will have this section at the bottom called mod scenarios which is basically a list of all the game modes which the map developer has set up and packaged with the map mod. Every map should at least have Game Master, but may also have other game modes like Combat Ops or Conflict. Lucky for us, all we need to test out these mods is Game Master. 
which is basically Reforge's sandbox editor where you can set up missions and test stuff out. So we will go ahead and click this play button which will take us into Zarechna Game Master mode. I won't go into too much detail with Game Master but I will show you the very basics to check out the mods we have loaded up. Now the first mod you're going to want to check out is the map right? So holding the right mouse button and dragging will rotate your camera and WSAD will move you around the map while Z and Q will move you up and down. I'm not sure what the controls are for console, but if you're new to the game, which I assume anyone watching this probably is, then you should have control hints turned on by default, so that should help. Once you've had a look around the map, you can create a player. On PC, this is done by right clicking and selecting create a player, or alternatively, you can just press space. This will give you a bunch of different characters you can spawn in, and as you can see on the right, we can narrow down our options to just the RHS ones from the mod we enabled, by checking USAF, AFRF and ION in the filter section. Clicking on a character will place it on the map where you click. Next we will open the entity browser by clicking here or pressing tab. Here you can place hostile or friendly AI, but in our case we are interested in all those juicy RHS weapons and equipment so we can get our battle barbie on. Just like before we can narrow it down to just the RHS factions so we are going to go ahead and check USAF and select the USAF arsenal. Now, our final mod was the AH6M Little Bird, and to get ourselves one of those, we want to open the Entity Browser again, uncheck any filters you have applied, and then select the Vehicle Filter, as well as the Modded Filter, all the way down at the bottom, and the different variants of the Little Bird should now be staring at you. All we have left to do now is test them out, and you can do so by clicking the Player's Character button on the top left. It is worth mentioning there is heaps more that can be done with Game Master, such as adding spawn points and objectives, but that is outside the scope of this video. But you should find plenty of videos explaining that here on YouTube. Once you're in the game, you can open up the arsenal by pressing F, and I find the easiest way to equip and unequip items and weapons is by right clicking on them. Unless it is a weapon attachment, in which case you can drag and drop the attachment directly onto your weapon, provided it is compatible. Now you can go ahead and jump in your little bird and spend the next 30 minutes geeking out over how the traces ricochet off the ground. Don't worry, we all do it. Now I know that seems like a lot, but just remember if you don't care about trying anything out and you just want to play on a modded server, just go to the community tab in the multiplayer menu and the mods will be automatically downloaded upon joining the server. I think that pretty much sums it up for mods and the last bit of advice I can give you is that if and when you become tired of the chaos that is a Reforged Republic server and you are looking for something more on the Milsim side where communication and teamwork is used, then jump in my discord and say hi. We regularly hold operations and we also have a private realism unit called Raid Company that focuses on the training and implementation of real world tactics and procedures. I hope this video was helpful. I'm Raiden, thanks for watching.